Hi, I'm at Wine Connection in Sukhumvit Soy 47. You might ask yourself, what do food, sex, politics, reincarnation and superstition got in common? Well, to find out, you just need to read any of John Burdett's books. Let's talk to John. Hi John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Keith, thanks for being thanks here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. John, tell us, what was your first impression when you set foot in the kingdom? Well, it's hard to describe the way Thailand was 30 years ago. It was such so relaxing after Hong Kong. I was working in Hong mm. Kong. Hong Kong was the most stressful country in the world after Beirut, which was at war. And you come to Thailand and it was relaxed. It was the land of smiles. And it was, um, well, it was an addiction. It was love at first sight. I've been mean, coming back pretty regularly ever since. Yeah. Big difference from Beirut to Bangkok. <laughs> quite, <laughs> quite, quite the contrast. <laughs> Hope so. Yeah. John, what was your uh, inspiration to become a crime fiction novelist? As, as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a writer. I always wanted to write fiction. And crime fiction, well, because um, it's, it's, the po it's the pace of the narrative, I think, with crime fiction, which draws people in. And by the time I was ready to publish a book, I just think seriously about writing a book for publishing, it was thrillers, crime thrillers, police um, thrillers that were selling. That was what publishers were interested in. And there was a lot of pressure, really, on publishers to, um, to, to publish crime fiction as opposed to other kinds of literary fiction because people were no longer buying literary fiction. Now it's almost dead. People, uh, literary fiction hardly exists anymore. Yeah, yeah. It, kind of, it kind of fits with your passion for Thailand and the culture and also in Southeast Asia inherently has all these fantastic sort of crime scenarios, doesn't it? Absolutely. And the, the thing about crime fiction is you have a cop as a central character. The great thing about cops is that they move up and down. They move vertically as well as horizontally in a society. I've seen them move know? horizontally. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, they, they, they meet the millionaires, the billionaires, and they meet the, the, the bad people on the streets and everybody in between. So it's a fantastic career. As a child, did you have a favorite author? Well, when I got into, into um, popular fiction, my, my first love really was Len Dayton. Mm -hmm. He was the, you know, doing the spy stuff long before Le Carre came along. When Le Carre came along, then it was Le Carre. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the favorites were, in, in that sort of genre, was Len, Len Dayton. You know, as, a, as a sort of a romantic young man, I also loved G.H. Lawrence. But yeah, that's yeah. quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah. But great, great writers, great books. Mm. Yeah. John, what's the process and elements in required of a book to make it to film? Well, I mean, you've got to, you've got to have a strong narrative line. What, a, what a, a scriptwriter is looking for is a spine, because a, a, a film actually is much shorter than a novel. So he wants a spine, and using that spine can take bits of the novel and make a coherent movie mm. out of it. That's what he's, he's looking for. And if he can't find that, then very often he'll, he'll throw up his hands and say, well, uh, you know, I can make more money doing another book. So it's, if your book is in the least bit complex, then you're going to have trouble getting it made into a movie. All my books have been optioned for movies. People have spent, you know, film companies have spent money um, hiring the option. In the Hollywood system, you've got to have a star, and that star would have to be Eurasian. And mm -hmm. there are not that many of those. You'd have to have a director who's at least familiar with uh, Southeast Asia. There are not mm -hmm. that many of those. You have to have a scriptwriter who has an intuitive understanding of the culture. Otherwise, you get a wooden kind of interpretation of. He doesn't Thailand. get all the idios idiosyncrasies of, of no, the just, dynamic of you, the city. No, you just get this sort of, um, you know, almost like a sort of a supermarket mm -hmm. version of Thailand, which is, is, wouldn't work very well. And it's not yeah. what the yeah. book's about. Yeah. So, you know, people keep trying. I'm grateful. I'm grateful yeah. that I'm selling the options. You know, yeah, I wouldn't well, mind if they actually made a movie sooner or they, later. Um, well, I'm, 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 <laughs> I hope they do yeah. in the near future. Yeah. Tell us about your uh, latest release, your new book, and what Son Chai has been up to in uh, the Bangkok asset. Yeah, well, from the first book, um, Bangkok 8, people have been saying, well, when's he going to meet his father? Come on, you know. Mm -hmm. I told him, he told us his father was a U.S. vet in Vietnam. When are we going to meet him? What are we going to do about it? So that's been playing on my mind for more than a decade. And finally, I thought I'd, um, I'd go at it and see, see what happens. Bring and together. Um, it, yeah, w there was no way of going into that without going into Vietnam. And incidentally, I don't think you can live in Southeast Asia without being terribly conscious of Vietnam and, and what happened at that time. 
So I've gone um, a lot more deeply into that, into Vietnam, into history mm -hmm. than I have in any of the other books. And it's produced for me a, um, a somewhat different kind of book. Everybody said so. It, it's mm -hmm. different. It's bigger, it's wider, it's deeper, it's maybe you know, a little bit less witty, a little bit less trying to, for, for laughs and for sensation, much more interested in going more deeply into the whole um, yeah. situation, where life is now in Southeast Asia. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a little uh, trip to Cambodia in there as well. Oh, a bit well, of a yes. twist, <laughs> as, as you're known for. <laughs> uh, well, Cambodia, of course, is a, is, a, is a completely different place. I mean, once you get into Thai yeah. superstition, there's nothing in yeah. Thai superstition that doesn't come from Cambodia. Cambodian mm -hmm. script, which is very close to Thai script, is considered even today a magical script. All the amulets mm -hmm. and so on are written in Cambodian script. Yeah, so it's right, considered yeah. the source of magic in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. You don't really give away much, do you? <laughs> <laughs> if you, uh, if and when you read the Bangkok Gazette, I'm, I'm sure you'll be taken on a journey. And uh, he doesn't give away anything right, right up till the end. How do you blend? There's a lot of senses in your books. How do you blend food, sex, crime, superstition, reincarnation, and politics, uh, corruption? In your books? Well, the, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the blending really comes from my very first editor, a wonderful old American gentleman named Sam Vaughan, who's retired now. He, he, my first manuscript, he said, well, it's fine, but what does it feel like? What does it smell like? Mm -hmm. what, what, what is the noises? What are, you know, is it hot? Is it cold? You know, is it raining? You know, tell us everything about what's happening within this character. Mm -hmm. And that was fantastic advice, yeah. and I've been following it ever since. And of course, if you, once you base yourself in the Southeast Asia, where the the the, uh, the sensory stimulation is so much greater than uh, most other places, you've got the food, you've got the heat, you've got the smells, the good yeah. and the bad smells, and yeah. you know the whole thing. The spices, the spices, and let's face it, you've got the the the, the notorious sensuality of um, parts of Bangkok as well. Yeah. Yeah. All all come into it, and what it what it makes so is an organic character moving through the city. You know, mm -hmm. That's what I really wanted to aim for. It's kind of like an octopus with tentacles <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Isn't well, that, well, we are. If you think about our senses, you yeah. know, that's what yeah. we are. Yeah. Really. John, you know, I, I know you travel a lot through Thailand. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your experiences and places, uh, cultures and uh, unusual things you experience while, while you're traveling through Thailand? Yeah, well Thailand is an amazing place. Um, it's a hub as everybody knows, but I don't think you see the significance until you mm. travel around. I've been into the, the deep south, the Muslim south on the, on the border with Malaysia and quite extraordinary to see young Muslim men come over for the, uh, mm -hmm. to sample the charms of the Thai girls uh, waiting on the other side of the border where the... Um, Completely prohibited in their own countries. Prohibited in, and as well as the alcohol yeah. and um, of course their, their currency is the local currency in the south of Thailand. The uh, Malaysian ringgit, isn't it? And um, up north in, uh, in uh, Isan, well I mean half the people you meet on the streets are from Isan in, uh, in Bangkok. Uh, when a, someone from Isan talks about their country, they don't mean Thailand, they mean Isan, and it is a different culture. Mm -hmm. They know very well it used to be uh, Laotian, and their, t their dialect is really a dialect of Lao, not, not, not standard Thai at all. Yeah. And it's a completely different um, attitude to life. Very poor, of course, the north, mm -hmm. northeast of Thailand is, doesn't have the same fantastic fertility that the rest of the country mm -hmm. has, and you get completely different um, traditions. And of course, until about 40 or 50 years ago, Thai Buddhism in, out in the country went hand in hand with animism, with their local pagan beliefs. And you still find that. I stumbled upon what they call the Ten Village Festival in May one year, up in Isan in Loi. And uh, it was extraordinary. It was a huge festival. Ten villages participated Annual in it. Annual festival. Yeah. Annual festival. Yeah, yeah. Ten villages participated in it. It was terribly well organized and rehearsed. There wasn't a sign of Buddhism um, for the whole of the three days. And you've got people dressing up in all sorts of costumes. You've got 
young men who were taking the part of the devil, therefore they were completely black from head to foot and held a trident in their hands. I mean, mm -hmm. looked almost Hindu at, at times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it really is... Um, pagan. Uh, yeah, pagan. It really is a place of extraordinary variety and fascination. Yeah, well, that's a big, huge turn. Well, Ten village uh, yeah. festival. They say terribly seriously. Yeah. I mean, they rehearse, they have the costumes and everything. Yeah, yeah well. And of course, in mm -hmm. Thailand, it's bound up with luck. You know, it'd be unlucky if they didn't do it. So, uh, oh, okay, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of like, uh, yeah. Well, but what isn't in Thailand? Yeah. Everything is to yeah. do with fortune. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Great. John, how do you go about your research, your new books? Yeah, places, for me, people, uh, characters? I don't think I stop doing the research. And I think if my books are a bit different to the others, it's because I just hang out and listen to what people mm -hmm. say and watch what people are doing and just sort of become part of the scene rather than go around asking a whole lot of questions or reading a whole lot of books. I do that as well. But basically More hanging personal out. Interaction with yeah, personal interaction with, with the people. I mean, the wonderful thing about Buddhist people is that if you ask them a question, they tell you the truth because they don't want the bad karma that comes from telling lies. So, I mean, you can just ask someone you've only been known for five minutes mm -hmm. and they'll tell you their life story, which for a novelist is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Some Thai people are very good like that, very open. Marvelously open people and so easy to feel at home. You know? yeah, yeah. What is your advice for young writers coming into the market, releasing their publishing, trying to get a publishing deal, the first book? Well, I mean, you really got to have a, a body of work to show. I mean, you've got the first book, that's great. If you self-publish, then um, that's a good start. But don't expect to get anywhere with just one manuscript. These days, publishers, they, re they really want to be confident that they've got some someone they can run with, you know, yeah. because it, just one book, one off, it doesn't make a lot of difference to the publisher or to the author. Yeah. It's almost like having a business plan for your, your future, your first book, oh, and this is this will be a series. Or well, that's that's exactly it. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not why people become novelists, but the reality is it's a business. If you want a good publisher, then that publisher is going to invest a lot of money in you, not just what he pays, but what, what, what the... Um, how they sell the book, you know, the advertising and the um, everything they pay for on the internet because a lot they of people... They want to see return on their... Yeah, they, they, they have to, you know, it's, it's a business like any other. Where are your books most popular? Well, uh, the, the United States is, mm -hmm. is by far and away the biggest um, buyer of my books. Australians um, like the books. They, Australians write to me, they like the references to Australians that I make from time to time. <laughs> you know, uh, it kind of makes them laugh because, of course, there are plenty of Australians in Southeast yeah, Asia. Absolutely. And they're very familiar with, uh, with Bangkok. But the biggest um, readership is in the United States, and I've been told that the prison population of the United States loves my books. So wow. I, I happen to have a <laughs> correspondent who was, uh, uh, he was in jail in, in the States, and he was moved around close, from jail to jail. Close yeah. to personal yeah. friend, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> no, I never met him, I, 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 email friend. But um, he's very smart and very, very literate, so he was a librarian at every single prison that he went to. Well. And he said, that your books are popular in all of the prison systems. That, and um, by the way, there's a six foot four biker with tattoos who loves your books. He's just being released after doing 20 years for murder. And he's on the way to Bangkok. <laughs> and maybe you don't want to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe he'd like to meet up for a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't become a writer, has he? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> he may in the future. He, he, may, know, he could turn up any minute. Well, right? He could actually <laughs> turn up in one of your books. Yeah, easily, yeah. <laughs> John Bordet, thank you so much for pleasure. being on the show. Pleasure. It's been a pleasure talking to you.